Hey there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got another dollar store conversion video for you today. I'm going to turn Barbie into a bronze skull crusher warrior. <laughs> right after the drop. So in this video, we'll be focusing mainly on the Barbie figure, uh, but I'm using the, the footage from the, the craft done from earlier, and some of it still includes Batman. This was a wonderful, uh, wonderful figure to work with. I really love the result, and uh, I'll put a link to it. If you haven't seen it already, uh, I'd love if you uh, gave it a look. Thank you. But for this video, we are going to focus on Barbie and converting that figure into a great looking bronze statue. Always uh, keep an eye out when you're at the Dollar Tree. These were only a dollar a piece um, and they're uh, just two of many. There's a ton of great figures and I urge you to uh, keep your eyes open wherever you go, you never know when you might find that uh, really cheap piece of, uh, of hardware or, or a neat toy or something that you can really, uh, really quickly turn into a, an absolutely wonderful piece of terrain. So we've got soccer Barbie here or uh, football Barbie, depending on uh, where you're at. And the first thing we got to do is get rid of that soccer ball. It's got to go. Um, I suppose you could use some green stuff and sculpt it into a skull, but I am going to turn to my box of Citadel skulls and, uh, and replace it completely. Now I, I thought I had found the perfect skull. It looked like the right height and uh, I was really excited. The original plan was for Barbie to have her foot on one large demon-esque skull. She was going to be my demon slayer type statue, but the skull refused to sit right with her foot on it just right. She was leaning over like the, uh, the leaning tower of Pisa and uh, it just wasn't working. So I detached her foot <laughs> from the big skull and found a different skull, an orc skull in the Citadel box. And this worked a whole lot better. Um, I didn't necessarily want her to be a slayer of orcs, um, but the demon skull was still there. I was gonna leave it. And at this point I just thought, let's go skull nuts. <laughs> so a couple of human skulls and, uh, and we've got Barbie just standing on a whole, a whole pile. She went from being a hero statue in my mind to perhaps a villain, maybe a conqueror. And then it's time to get to uh, my chipboard and start cutting out some pieces to decorate this Barbie figure. Um, I find like a, a Little Debbie or a Hostess box that provides a nice thin but sturdy chipboard. And, uh, and cereal boxes are a good source of it too. I had uh, thought maybe a, a little sideways cape and a, and a belt for this figure, but I wasn't quite liking the fit. Uh, so I turned to do a breastplate instead. Once cut out, uh, I try to shape it with my fingers and then just glue into place. It doesn't uh, look too good unpainted, but uh, once a layer of paint or two gets on there, uh, it becomes a convincing breastplate for the figurine. Next up, I wanted to give her a cape. So I took that piece from earlier that didn't quite work, uh, measured it out against the figure, put some new lines in, and decided to cut her a cape with some uh, pieces that went over her shoulder. This would make it look uh, like it 
really belonged on the statue and the straps I plan to add like underneath the breastplate as though uh, they were uh, attached and it was the actual armor being held together. Uh, I find that when you create details that that look like they work they are much more convincing to the eye so if you add a strap great but if you manage to put a buckle on it all the better it, it really sells that uh, that strap being a strap so I'm hoping that these straps really sell the fact that that's a breastplate and that what's hanging behind is her cape Once the cape's been glued into place, um, I probably should have done this beforehand, but I'm gonna add some uh, ruffles into it, just pinching it along the edges and, and giving it the look as though it's, uh, well, a cape. Then I'm gonna carve out a couple shoulder pad looking shapes. And I realized uh, that the hair was on the one side and I had already committed to the hair being there. So we're going to go back to that asymmetrical look. Um, I like it anyway. It always tends to look really good for these dollar store conversions. So one big shoulder pad and I've got these little uh, round gemlets or I don't know what you call these things, but uh, they make great looking little rivets and bumps. I recommend using them in all kinds of terrain um, and I'm going to use them right here on Barbie's breastplate. Uh, they have their own stick them, but um, I'm going to use a little super glue as well just to really lock them down. And boy, a simple piece of chip carved just right and curved with a couple of these little buttons, and I'm sold. That looks like a pauldron to me. What do you think? I like it. Uh, next, I'm going to jazz up the torso a little bit, give her a big old belt buckle. And with this belt buckle, I'm going to take that, uh, that other piece I cut for the shoulder, and I'm going to fold that up, and I'm going to put that on her hip and give her some, uh, some armor, uh, kind of like an armored skirt. Um, for those of you who know the proper term for that piece of armor. I apologize. I bet you're so mad at me right now. Uh, I'm going to do another one on the other side. Uh, I probably screwed this one up. It should have uh, draped a little a little farther down on the angle, but uh, I bet if I didn't call it out right there, you wouldn't have noticed. And uh, once these two are all glued up, I'm going to put uh, uh, a large one on the back and the back one is going to be two diff uh, two pieces glued together for a nice long uh, back part of the armor. After this I decided to freehand a couple of rounded off rectangles as some greaves. Cut, kind of give them a little curve and then glue them to the shin. Once those pieces are attached, I will cut out uh, smaller pieces for her shoe to give her a uh, plated boot look. And then uh, after those pieces are attached, I thought uh, the greaves are a great place to continue that decoration with those uh, beads or those rivets. So I decided to glue uh, a couple to each, uh, each of the greaves as well. I uh, super glued a few washers to the base just to give, uh, give Barbie a little more weight and then some hot glue and a squish down on some of my card and then trim her out clean. Not bad Barbie, looking good. Uh, then I took her outside and hit her with a gray primer and at this point I realized I forgot to flock the bottom. And you can still see the word Barbie imprinted on the base. So hit it up with some uh, white PVA glue and then 
uh, used my craft sand, sprinkled it on the glue, uh, let that dry, and then I would begin to paint. I'm going to paint everything with my uh, Army Painter bronze color, though if you didn't have access uh, to the expensive mini paints, this is a piece of terrain, so I think a an apple barrel or an Americana bronze is going to do just fine for you. And then once everything's painted bronze, I'm going to go back in and hit it with a wash. And when I initially hit it with a dark wash, I apply it like a wash and I don't get the effect I really want. So I come back with the wash and I begin to stipple it on and this allows the wash to stay on those surfaces and it starts to build this uh, patina that I'm looking for on this ancient bronze statue. After the dark wash I'll go back in and uh, do the same stippling technique with the dark green uh, wash and then uh, I'll do the same thing with a dark blue wash. Once those washes dry they will have created this really cool multiple, multiple colored patina effect. Um, but I want to add that oxidation, that light turquoise wash. So a drop of turquoise, and uh, at the time I thought maybe I could salvage that, but it was a little too much water. And I go to apply my wash, and it's a little light. Uh, and that's because there was just too much water to paint. Uh, I gave it a go. And, and I saw that it was close to what I was looking for. So I just add another drop of paint and uh, this time hit them up with the wash again. And I'm much happier with this heavier effect. I just want to take the time to say thank you for watching the video. I uh, really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing and you like the video, please hit like. And uh, subscribe to the channel. I try to push a new video out uh, at least every two weeks. And uh, boy, I try hard to do it every week, but it's, it's tough sometimes, so bear with me. But uh, thank you. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. I'm super happy with how these turned out. This was my first time trying bronze. And uh, I think it turned out great. And uh, let's get to uh, the statue set up. We've got uh, our tabletop all set up. Tinley and the Shamrock Boys are closing in on a maniacal cult. They've kidnapped the innkeeper's wife and they're going to sacrifice her at their profane altar so that her soul can inhabit and animate one of the two ancient bronze demons. Tinley. The Shamrock Boys are behind you. What are you going to do? Get in there and stop those cultists before it's too late. This has been a real fun project. Uh, I recommend everybody give it a try. It's an absolute blast and you can do it. Uh, it's very easy and I believe in you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, as always, like each other love each other, and craft on.